Uh, I'm so excited about this. You know how easy it is to take your home videos and turn them into movies? Listen to this. You get an iMac, of course. Get your digital video camera. Hook it up and start iMovie. All right, now getting started, before we even get into the application of iMovie, we need to go to the internet and find our video and audio that we want to use for the uh, production. So here's a song by Mac Miller. We're going to take that song, and it's going to be our basic soundtrack to our iMovie production. So you go to YouTube, find the song that you want, copy the link, then go to a new tab and open keepvid.com. This site extracts video and audio from sites such as YouTube. So paste the link in the bar provided and then click download. And then once prompted you're going to have to accept, uh, it says accept the risk and want to run the application. It's just a liability thing, just run the application. Okay, so once you enter the video you're actually going to get multiple links. One of them should be an mp4 and one of them should be an mp3. The mp4 is going to be your video. So that's going to take the whole video with audio attached to it and download that. Or you can download just the straight mp3 and drag that into your iTunes library which you can further use into iMovie. So we're just going to take the mp3 for now. So you click mp3 and then it's going to ask you again would you like to run the application and run it. Once you click run, go ahead and click download mp3. You can get the high quality or the standard. I'll get the high quality. Save file and then you're going to go and find it in your finder. Once you find it, drag it to your desktop or drag it straight into iTunes. Open up iTunes. Drag it in. Also make sure you play it, make sure it's all working up to par. If it doesn't come out correctly, then just re-download it. Okay, so now in iMovie, we're going to import a clip that we have on our desktop. To do that, you're going to open your iMovie, then go to File, Import, Movies. Then it's going to bring up this navigator and go to where you imported the file. Mine is imported to the desktop. So here is the movie file of Miss Douglas that we're going to use. So I'm going to select it, then hit import. Be sure to give it a little bit of time to process the image or else you can lag out your computer. Okay, so once imported, you're going to see it's down here in your workbench. So go ahead and double click it and it will select all of it and also bring up the inspector. Go ahead and close out of the inspector and drag your clip up to your timeline. Now that it's in your timeline, we're ready to mend it. If you want to go ahead and mend it down here in your workbench, that's okay. But I want to kind of work with it up in my timeline, see what I can do. So double click it again and open up your inspector. Here's most of your video editing tools. So we have our video effect, audio effect, we can speed up, slow down, all that great stuff. So let's start off with a video effect. So, first, we have Flipped, Raster, Cartoon, Aged Film, Film Grain, Hard Light, Day into Night, Glow, Dream, Romantic, Vignetta, which is my favorite, Bleach Bypass, Old World, Heat Wave, Sci-Fi, Black and White, Sepia, Negative, and X-Ray. So now that we took a look at all the video effects, let's we'll just select one. We'll go with heat wave. Now that we have our video effect, we can go on to audio effect and kind of add a background sound that's going to just adjust the overall sound of the clip. I don't really use these very often, but however, you get about 18, 16 options that you can actually choose from. After that, you can also adjust the speed of the clip. You can either speed it up towards like 800%, or you can slow it down to 12.5%, but right now it's actually playing. Keep in mind when you slow down a clip, the frames are going to add a little bit of a choppy look to the video, so don't slow it down too much. Now smooth and clip motion. If you actually look at this clip, you'll notice that the camera moves a little bit. If you smooth clip motion, it's going to analyze for stab stabilization and it's going to zoom into the clip and adjust itself every time that camera moves to keep itself from actually moving a lot. So now that you look at it, the camera doesn't move very much. Keep in mind that if you want to have a non-moving camera, just use a tripod and avoid stabilization just because it can lower the overall quality okay, of the so picture. So now moving on from the clip part of Inspector, let's go to video. Here's a spot where you can manipulate the overall 
contrast and colors in the picture. You can increase the exposure to light, increase the brightness, add some contrast, and you can also increase the saturation, kind of making Miss Douglas look like an Oompa Loompa. Or you can make it look like she's a demon, which is pretty creepy to be honest with you. Moving on to audio, you can adjust the volume of the clip, add ducking, which will reduce all the other clips, so if you have audio in the background, it will reduce the volume of the audio so that you can listen to this clip speak. Fade in, fade out, pretty general, it just um, fades in the volume and fades out the volume prior to actually stopping instead of just stopping right in the midst of um, talking. Enhance is probably the best tool that you can use uh, by far because you can actually make yourself get studio quality sound out of a regular camera. Uh, just by increasing the percentage of reduced background noise that will kind of get rid of the uh, ambient noise in the background like static or people talking and it can also clarify the voice of the person that you're interviewing or recording or whatever you're doing. Now the equalizer I don't really touch because that's something that I believe is too far beyond anything that we really need for video recording but it will just adjust your volume in certain areas. Okay, now luckily Inspector is one of the only difficult things about iMovie. Now let's move on to the little five icon widget bar here in the right center of the program. So starting off we have a little music icon which gives you iMovie sound effects, iLife sound effects, and your iTunes library. iMovie and iLife are kind of the same deal but they're just they have different things in them. They're just mainly sound effects, music backgrounds, you know, like birds chirping, water, uh, jazz tunes, things like that. Now, recently in the video, we got a song from Mac Miller from KeepVid.com, and I dragged that into the playlist on iTunes called Untitled Playlist. And here it is right here. So we're going to take that song and drag it into our timeline. There's two ways that you can put it into your timeline. One is the way I just did, where you drag it into the blank gray area, and the other one is where you take it and you drag it over a clip. Now, already you can see the difference in looks when you drag it in. The one that you drag in on a clip makes an underlying green line, and the one that you drag into the blank space makes a huge box that surrounds the clip. Now, when you drag in another clip, you'll see another difference. The one that you dragged into the blank space automatically covers the next clip. The one that you dragged into the clip stays stationary. But what you can do is you can also drag it over that clip if you want to. So this is two different ways to bring it in to your video. This one will automatically cover any clip that you add in, so that's where it can become a problem. So whenever I make my videos, I always just drag the audio onto a clip so I get this bar right here. So I'm going to delete this one right here. Now when it comes to working with the audio itself, you can actually click this little cog wheel here and you can do your audio adjustment, clip adjustment, but the really the only thing that I ever go to is clip trimmer. And when you click that, you'll get this huge uh, timeline of audio sound. And you can actually see where the beats are in the music itself. Now some songs actually have a pause before they actually begin playing, so you can actually adjust where the song will start. So when you make the switch here, if you look up here, it's shorten the clip and that's where it's now going to start in this part of the song. You can also take that and drag it around to different areas. So that's the part that's going to play. It's actually quite simple. Okay, now moving on to the little camera icon on your widget bar. Here's where your iPhoto and photo booth library will appear. As you can see, I don't have any photos in here. But all you really have to do is find the photo that you want, click and drag it into your timeline. Or you can also do the same thing from your desktop. Click and drag straight into iMovie. Moving on to the text spot, here are all kinds of different formats of text that you can put into your video. You can either put them over a clip or put them as a new 
clip itself. So putting them over a clip, you click the one that you want and drag it onto a clip. And creating a new clip, you click and drag and put it so that this little green bar shows up and drop it. And then it will give you all kinds of different backgrounds to select from. Some of them are moving like this one. To edit, you go ahead and click the top piece and then type whatever you want. Same thing with the other one. You can also show fonts at the top left corner, change the color, font type, and font size. Keep in mind some of these you actually cannot change the color of, like this one here, this one, and other ones that are pre-colored like this one. Moving on to transitions. This is a very helpful tool if you're trying to change the topic of a video. So, as you can see we have a split in between these two clips and it just goes straight to the next clip. To see which transition you're getting, just put your mouse over the selected piece and then let it do its own work. And it will tell you exactly what's, or show you exactly what's going to happen to the video. So let's use this one called Mosaic. Click and drag it in between the clips to where the little green bar appears. You can also double click it and increase the length of the duration. So let's make it two seconds long. Now if you play it, you'll notice that it does it all for you. Now lastly is moving on to the little button that I like to call the destination button. Here is all kinds of different maps that you can choose from to go from one point to a next point. So saying your video is taking place in America and you were just talking about Afghanistan, you can start off from one point to the next. Now let me show you that. We'll take the realistic looking globe and drag it into our video. Now you can do starting location and your end location. Or you could just do your start location to show what part of the map you're in. You can also zoom into it, show clouds, which takes a second to load. and then pick your locations. So let's start with Afghanistan. And then we'll come back to Boston. So now once you play the clip, it will rotate the globe showing from one place to the next. The same thing goes for all these other maps. You can start with the old look, basic green on blue, a geography type of map where you would see a globe in school, or the realistic from space view of Earth. Now wrapping up this tutorial video, let's take some last looks at quick things to know about iMovie. Starting off with your event library. Here's where all your imported files are in iMovie. So looking at my first folder here, this is all the video that I use to make this current project. Try keeping everything together so you don't lose track of things. And this one right here is just a dummy folder that I made and deleted everything out of. Don't have to worry about that. Project library is where you go back to take a look at other videos that you've made. I've deleted all my other videos, but you can see that I've got this project that I made for you guys and then the video that I'm actually making right now. This video that I'm making right now is the actual tutorial video. So far I have 13 minutes and 20 seconds on it. After this clip, it's probably going to be right around 15 minutes. Now one of the best things to use in iMovie is the cropping tool. So let's get rid of some of this clip right here. Get rid of the music, get rid of this. And that. Okay, so here's one of the clips that I actually used in the video. Now, you click the cropping tool and you can either crop, fit, or use key burns. Allowing black will allow you to use these black edges and expand the size of the crop. 
So key burns, starting off, the green box is where you start and the red box is where you end. So if you see here, I'll start off with a large scale of the actual picture and then zoom down all the way to the top right corner. You can also adjust it to anywhere you want it. So once you click done and play the clip by hitting the space bar, it will zoom into the clip as it plays. So once again, going back to crop, you can actually hit the crop button itself, select any area on it, using the corners to extend or shorten the actual size of the box. And once you click done, you'll notice that's where it's zoomed into. And then fit being pretty obvious, you just click that and it fits the whole thing to scale.